We're delighted today uh, to have with us Dr. Jack Backles, a fellow Michigander, I might note, who served in the Korean War uh, many years ago, many decades ago. And I often tell Dr. Backles, I'm honored to know a fellow um, for whom a building is named. Uh, Dr. Backles is the former president of our local community college, Dabney S. Lancaster, and is quite a local character. Everybody knows him, and he's joined us today to share uh, some of his views of his uh, Korean War experience. Uh, welcome, Jack. Well, good to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your military experience, beginning with OCS uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I got in, well, it was either be drafted into the Army or I could make an application for, and I ended up going to OCS for, for the Navy, and I graduated there uh, in, in uh, what, what was it, 53, and uh, was my initial uh, assignment was to report to a ship out in the middle of the Pacific in the, in the Korean War, and that is where I ended up. Uh, so therefore, uh, I had, after graduating from Michigan in forestry, I, all of a sudden I was out in the middle of the Pacific on a destroyer having nothing to do with forests. It was an interesting concept. Uh, however, there was a lot more involved or there was more that happened between my the education I got and what because we're talking about uh, distances and so on just like in forestry and the only problem is the distance was on the ocean. <laughs> well, do you remember the most challenging incident that you encountered uh, in your military experiences? Is there one thing that really stood out that? One of the biggest biggest shocks is you're 50, you're 22, 23 years old, and all of a sudden you have a 35 or 40 year old veteran, uh, who is on board ship and is junior to you, and you are telling him how to do to do things, and it, it's a it's quite a shock for a 23 year old to talk to a 35 or 40 year old chief petty officer and they have to obey your orders. Because as an OCS graduate, right. you're an officer. As, as an officer, yes. And uh, it really takes, I can never forget one time I was uh, officer of the deck and we, kept, we had a uh, drunken chief petty officer come aboard ship and he was really, really obnoxious and everything. I had an 18-year-old uh, officer of the deck to take care of the situation, and I sent him down to the to the uh, chief petty officer's mess and got three of the biggest other chief petty officers to come up and take care of the situation. <laughs> uh, that was a shock. Was this the Frank Evans? It was on the Frank E. Evans, yes, sir. Destroyer that I, it was some, it was, uh, a ship that came into existence in 54 and had very little experience in World War II. Well, you were a young guy, and I'm sure you're dealing with many of these military veterans. Did it take long to get what you would consider your most important lesson during your service? You know, within two months, you realize that you do know what has to be done and has and do it. It people do not understand the authority that are given to junior officers, whether in the Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever it is, you have a bunch of people who are very young, very inexperienced, but well educated. And they have to make decisions for people who have more experience but at a lower level. And it's tough, but you end up doing it. <laughs> you just had to rise to the occasion. Would, what, was there anything, when you look back in your service, what was probably the most surprising thing? Was it distances or the ferocity of war or the, the challenges of personnel? The... It's difficult to really 
pin it down to one or two things, but uh, when you're a, when once you get in the military, you're different. Uh, people don't realize it, and all of the veterans out there do know that things are different for you because you all of a sudden appreciate this country. You also appreciate the experience you're having, but how different it was from when you were when you were a civilian and didn't have this background. You don't understand it. And when you read the paper today, you read it differently than the people who have no military experience. They have no concept of what people in, in involvement in these activities is so great. After, the, uh, after World War II, as you mentioned in, prior to the formal interview, you said that you recognized some problems that you never had imagined before. There were huge numbers of people that needed to be relocated. There was a war going on in China, in effect. Um, tell us a little bit about your experiences with that. Well, well, people, you probably in the United States have no idea that when Harry Truman, President Truman, he uh, not only started sending military into Korea, they also, he also established a patrol between Formosa and China to stop, to prevent any war that would exist. And it was a small group of people, it was generally four destroyers, which is probably less than a thousand people, were involved in this particular at any, at any time. And uh, the Chinese nationalists on Formosa and the Chinese communists over on the mainland were threatening war between themselves at the time. And uh, we were put in, or the Formosa patrol was put in, to prevent them from having a war. And uh, it was an interesting concept because uh, we were, uh, our orders indicated that we would take on either side if the other side decided <laughs> to fight. And uh, therefore, uh, but in reality, I guess we really were there for the people on Formosa. But the Chinese uh, communists accepted the fact that we were going to do it. Well, we, you guys are basically responsible for the freedom Formosa enjoys today. That is correct. We were there first time and uh, we had one particular thing. Understand that of the four destroyers, that basically was it. You would always have one in port and at one time, uh, for some reason, the local military group wanted to thank us and so we were invited in for an evening meal of, of the Chinese uh, food with the eight or ten uh, series of foods you'd bring in and then between each one you'd have to have a, a salute to Chiang Kai-shek or else to uh, the American president and uh, it was a very, very interesting time. <laughs>